Greetings. In this video, we're going to go over the complete restoration of the IBM PC keyboard. This keyboard was in production from around 1982 to about 1987. This particular keyboard weighs about a good 10 pounds and is very restorable. Uh, many keyboards are completely disposable. This one is not. A couple of things. The first thing we must do is remove the entire keyboard assembly from the housing by removing these two screws on the back. And uh, once you've done that, you'll have a steel frame uh, which contains all plunger assemblies. Um, then you must remove all the keycaps individually, washing them with Windex and soapy water. A combination of the two will remove any debris that you may have. Um, once that's finished, you can begin disassembling the board, and uh, by that I mean the switch assembly with the circuit board and all plungers. And once those are completely disassembled, um, you can watch the rest of this video and I go over the process of what I experienced when I, when I got this all completely apart. So I hope you enjoy. Disassemble the keyboard uh, switch assembly, which hasn't been disassembled in over 27 years. In fact, here's the, all the inspection assembly information. It's pretty cool. Shop date code is K64936. Don't know what it means, but I've got all these initials. People who worked on this keyboard are probably all dead now. Um, all right. I'm going to bend this tab up a little bit. thing slides apart. Hopefully I can do this properly. I haven't done this in many, many, many years. So, here we go. Now it looks like the top piece has to slide backward. And to do that, It a little bit. Did I miss a tab? No. Let's see. This is probably all going to fall apart. Okay, it's not going to work as I hoped. Uh, what I wanted to do was do this without using compressed air, but I think I might have to do it with compressed air, so. Missing something here. I'm gonna swear I had one of these apart. Many. Oh, it's moving. careful because each and every one of these is going to want to fall out. Um, if you notice, these pop out. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift that out in its foam carrier. I think. Set this aside. Oh shit. Just as I suspected. Okay not going to work like I hoped. Just making sure none of these are unique so that they all go in the right place. Um, okay. These are all the buckle spring assemblies. Let's just leave that alone for now. Um, I think when we reassemble them, these are going to go on like that. To each one of them. I think I got it. Okay. Wish me luck. Okay. What we have here is the... I guess you'd call it the key tray. Um, this is where all the key plungers um, are mounted. This is actually what you're looking at when you look between the keys. And you'll notice that over all these years, it's developed a little bit of a corrosion problem. 
not really a problem, but it's noticeable. So we're going to give it a quick zap of black paint and um, before you put it back together again. I've already cleaned the keyboard frame. It looks brand new. And uh, beautiful. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of lithium grease um, into the, the keyboard height adjustments. Um, they're a little hard to turn, um, so we're just going to put some Libermanic white lithium grease, the same stuff we used on the floppy drive, and we're going to lubricate these assemblies. Alright, we've got all of our plungers and springs and whatnot sitting out in the sun drying up. So we're going to reassemble this mess. Alright, so the foam mat goes down first. Make sure it'll line everything up properly. Before you proceed to final assembly, right. you must insert the leveling bar into the space bar by installing the space bar first, as shown. Okay. Once you have finished Here inserting all of the plunger assemblies, um, the keyboard must remain upside down. Then, ensuring that all surfaces are dry and clean and free of any dust, you can place the metal backer plate with the circuit no. board. I'm going to put these in top of the to each hole steel punched plate assembly. First. Once okay. you've done this, make sure you line up all tabs. And, okay. Uh, got all of video, our... Showing um, you the different angles in which you can call them position. cylinders. But those tabs right there must be lined up properly. Got them all inserted, um, and, and now we're putting the, the plungers into each and every flat one as possible. You have got to 83 press of these. The place together How about 84 and or something. Slide them and, uh, into the notch. Go. Slide the backer plate into the notch. Um, each this is what your keyboard should look like before you place the, uh, tapping the assembly circuit the board hammer. back on. And this is Actually very important. be tapping the, the punched plate side so that it forces it into the notches. Once you've done that, if, as you can see on the right hand side, the tab is bent. That is the one that it's used to hold the assembly together. So bend that back to where it was originally, and you should be done. Now the unveiling of the final product, finished product. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Fully cleaned, painted internally. I painted the board, the, the backer board. And uh, now the height adjustment, tilt adjustment uh, locks finally work. So, with all this work a waste of time, we'll find out. Let's boot this sucker. Oops, the eyes are done. <laughs>